everyone and welcome. Today we continue to celebrate Women's History Month with the Dance Institute of Washington. My name is Kahina Haynes and I'm the Executive Director here at DIW. And my name is Ashante Green and I am the Creative Director at the Dance Institute of Washington. And we will be your hosts. In honor of Women's History Month, we are highlighting the voices of some phenomenal women in the world of dance. They have made tremendous advancements. They have broken down barriers. They have paved the way. And we feel their stories need to be continued and shared, not just with the performing arts industry, but the world. Yes. And today's guest is the one and only Ponika Jones. Ponika was born and raised in Miami, Florida, and she worked in various ballet, contemporary, and dance theater companies, both nationally and internationally. During her ever-expanding career, Ms. Jones has developed a love for ballet and dance instruction, yoga and gyrokinesis, and overall well-being. She plans to further her studies in these areas and continue blooming artistically. We're so happy to have Ponika join us today. Thank you, such an honor and pleasure to be here. Well, as you know, I'm a ballerina as dancer. Um, I have been a professional ballerina for, I'd say about 25, 26 years. And during this journey, um, yoga found me and the love of education, um, as well as well wellness, well-being. So gyrokinesis and yoga began swarming themselves, like march, marching towards me, really. <laughs> I really didn't get much of a choice. I was just open and surrendered to that. Um, so I'm enjoying my journey in coexistence in that, as well as budding artistic director and different visions of creativity and language. Beautiful. Thank you. So I'm going to kick us off. And, you know, I want to just give a disclaimer. This is unfiltered conversation right here. It's unfiltered. Um, we really want to get to some some real nuggets. I think our listeners um, just over the years, we want we want we want people to have an opportunity to really share their truth. So safe space here. And with that, I will kick us off. Panika, I'd love for you to share a bit with our listeners about your journey. Um, what has your, what is your narrative? What has been Panika Jones's experience? And particularly, if you could tell us maybe aspects of your journey that are not really well known, things that might surprise some of our listeners, how would you go about sharing that? Well, um, firstly, thank you for having me. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here. Um, it is a breath of fresh air for me. Um, and I believe that not only my story as well as many others have uh, the, the reason and the right. Mm -hmm. Lots to speak on and lots to share. So I'm firstly happy to be here. Um, now, I began dancing, as you said, in Miami, Florida. I was very young. And what most people do not know about me is that I was born about two and a half months early. Wow. That's like two pounds, a little baby. So the doctors were talking with my parents and were like, okay, she's gonna have to stay in the incubator. She's gonna have to be in here for a while. She is sick, she's mm -hmm. little, very weak. She's not eating. We had to figure out what's, you know, figure that out. So I was born very early. So the doctors recommended as early as possible for my parents to get me into something physical where you can develop your um, motor skills, you can develop your um, hand-eye coordination, um, uh, neurological, you know, the, the, the systems, the, all the body systems that we need in order to function as human beings. Um, so a lot of times with babies that are born premature, they are a little undeveloped in certain ways. It could be Anything you can think of, the list is very long. So I was dealing with a lot of things like that at a very young age. So thank you to dance um, as early as two to three um, has helped me um, balance out and, and, and uh, develop. So something that, turned, that, that was given as something as necessity, and this will help your baby 
grow and and balance herself out giving the body a chance to balance itself out and to mm -hmm. learn and to heal i started doing that before i even knew that's what was happening so wow. kind of just i don't really share much of that but you know maybe it's time it's time i don't use um development or or um you have mental disabilities you have disabled you have um you have hearing, you have the hearing world, you have the deaf community, you have the disabled dancers and you have the dancers that are able dancers. So I guess bringing this into the categories we are going to talk about, I believe, a lot of people don't know that about me, about how, how huge of an ambassador I am for diversity and a huge ambassador for um, uh, well-being yeah. and what dance can do for you and because of what it's done for me. So that's one that's a little deeper. It's a deeper look into something that a lot of people may not know about me. Thank you. Thank you for that. I want to I want to build um, on. So your one thing that I know about you is your focus and prioritization on wellness. And I would love for you to talk about that. I think in as women in particular, um, sometimes we have to make a choice between showing up in how society needs us to show up or the different relationships that we try to honor and support versus ourselves, right? It's, it seems like we have to always choose between something else and ourselves. And I feel that is magnified in the world of dance where you are literally sacrificing and putting your body through such rigorous experiences. What are your thoughts on sort of the balance um, or counterbalance well, yeah, counterbalance, kind of like a triangle between. I feel, I feel a lot like this with this question. Yeah. How to? How do I counterbalance these challenges mentally and physically mm -hmm. in my way as a black woman? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> it's a loaded question. So I'm going to do my very best to be clear. Absolutely. Um, I'm so happy that this is a, is a comfortable spot. It's a comfortable space for us because these things need to be shared. Mm -hmm. Now, over a span of 20 plus years, about 25, 26 years of professional dancing career, this journey is ever changing. Mm -hmm. One way you will figure out, okay, this is what I need what I want and what I need. And then this is what people want and need from you. So sometimes you throw that out there and put it in there. It's okay, everybody's getting, including me, we're all good. Mm. So then as time goes on, you keep doing that. And that's good. After a while, then you start looking more at yourself and seeing well, how am I really feeling? Not just about that, but how am I really feeling firstly? How am I doing? How am I feeling that check-in? Mm. Um, physically and emotionally oh my body is as a, as a ballerina dancer you got tour life you got child in the world you got this you got that rehearsals um minor injuries thank god but i i'm thankful i've only had minor things i've had to deal with but i've seen some much greater challenges with that this and then the mental mental thing that goes on with you, you might have some family issues you may be dealing with your own mental things and matters of your heart in business, there's this, they're all sometimes compartmentalized, at least for me, compartments. Mm -hmm. um, and learning how to balance those things and pick and choose which one is the most right now of, of concern. Because if you fall apart, everything that you've got lining up or all that will not work. Something mm -hmm. is going to make you stop completely because something you need to take care of needs to be taken care of. So you can get your warning like that. I've had a number of experiences in my life where I thought I was taking care of myself and I didn't take enough care of myself in here. Body great. So I had to transfer, how do I, how is it I take such good care of here, the body? How do I transfer that inside of myself? I had to constantly, and I'm still learning to this day about that. So maintaining ourselves starting from the inside um and how that can carry over beautifully into your physical parts of your dance world because as an artist born artist that carries over and it is in my life then this is my life so when something is off it, it can definitely ruin a certain certain things in your life 
Um, so balancing that is shifts. So you have to be 70, 30, 30, 70, it all changes. Mm. Um, in my opinion, being aware of when I need to shift that, how. Mm. That is, that is deep because I think too often it's portrayed as even keel, right? The goal is that you're perfectly balanced at all times, but no, to your point, it's a, it's a give and take and it's in flux. It's yeah. not all the way evenly balanced. So you will have times where you feel like, you know what? I've not given enough to myself these past few weeks. I got to shift, yeah. right? That's, wow, I appreciate that. Thank and you. sometimes we don't have time for that. These three weeks are dedicated to this and this is all we have. We have to get this done. So you and what's going on in here has to go over there or mm -hmm. fit or get with it as much as possible. And then, okay, this is what you need to do. So you can get back to that, not leave it on the back burner forever. Just yeah. have to put it over there for a minute. We can't have emotional break at breakdowns in the middle of a, of a two hour rehearsal when we only have two weeks. We cannot do this because we don't have time. I'm so sorry. So learning that as a woman carries over into everything into my life as a, as a instructor ballet instructor in particular, dance instructor as a yoga teacher and how to process, that's kicked the emotional awareness into a whole nother thing. When someone walks into your class, you're like, how are you feeling today? They may say nothing or they may say everything. And you're like, okay, so we're gonna get to work and get right here on this mat, child's pose. Now yeah. just, the whole, just lay down. So I transfer that into my life today. When you feel like I don't know what I'm dealing with, I don't know what how I'm dealing with myself, child, just stop. Just stop. And just stop and breathe. That's hard. Yes. So learning how to do more of that um, and incorporating my, as far as my ballet career and then where I see myself going off into uh, artistic collaborations and teaching for various artists like, your, like yourselves um choreography artistic direction you know just artistic stuff all that stuff goes into it so I'm I, I I'm just thankful that I found yoga found me and it wasn't mm. what I expected it wasn't what I um I didn't see it coming yeah. anxiety yeah. Um, well, someone, they may not know, people may not know this about me either, but it wasn't the stretching and the pretty poses and just, you know, the, the very spiritual humbling part about even that with yoga that stimulated me to go into it. It was anxiety. Mm. I couldn't, like, I was just, it was just, I didn't realize it was, it had gotten that bad. Wow. So I was like, you're going to go in here and find out. And I noticed that more breathing helped me process it. Like, can't keep having panic attacks in the middle of, of, of Harlem somewhere on the side of the street. Wow. You can't have a panic attack in the middle of Times Square. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. It's making me want to breathe right now. I'm like, it makes you, like it was, there were things going on like that in my life that a lot of people don't know because a lot of those times I was alone. Mm. You know, a lot of those times, so no one was there to see it. Yeah. So I guess I'm bringing all that up about the, my relationship between my uh, my dance and then my dancing career and then my my budding yogi health well, wellness place. Yeah. So like a, I have to take yeah. them with me so I'll know what to do when circumstances jump off. You know even more now. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're actually sharing with our students, you know, um, being open-minded. But I just love how you said, you know, yoga found you you weren't running trying to search or it, it came to you and that's being you have to be available that's yeah. self-love um, yeah and that's extremely important uh, panika um it's actually a perfect segue to um the next question if you don't mind just talking about um your experience with leadership or any leadership opportunities as a young black woman or your take on that, you know, what you have seen, what you have witnessed, um, what are your thoughts? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> much, I've experienced much, <laughs> very much with that as of recently. Um, and I can, I can flash back about 23 years. Yeah. So 
leadership. Now, there aren't that many where we have more than we ever have before of artistic directors that are women. We're, we're, I worked for the first African American um, artistic director of a, of a ballet company myself. Karen Brown was the first African American artistic director at Oakland Ballet. So I got a chance to experience that. And the reaction of all of that around us, we were like, we didn't get to do some work. And she, they, she wanted to know why there weren't any, weren't any um, black dancers. So she was like, okay, I'll make a phone call, I'll find out. <laughs> you know, I'm just mentioning that because you can quote. We, I don't know if we're quote, we're going to quote um, any organizations or anything, but this movement was massive. Mm. And it just kind of went under the table. Mm. That was in what, 2005? Mm. Where's that article? Right. And we were like, it was a few of us at Dance Theater Parliament folded at the time in 2004. Mm -hmm. And some of us were on the run and some of us were like, okay, I'm done. And you know, we have our own stories. So I had caught wind of this and I wanted to catch, catch up with her and find out what that was. So as far as leadership is concerned, that organization and what I knew about it, it shifted and a lot of people loved it. And some people were like, absolutely not. That's too much for us. Woman yeah. and black woman at that and a well-established ballerina, she came from Dance Theater Problem. Well, she didn't come in saying, I want to run this company. No, she is a ballerina that has done this and done that. And I would like to take this opportunity to make this, this. Right. So as far as leadership is concerned, they really showed me things about the magic that can happen mm -hmm. and also how people still don't want, can't have it. Mm -hmm. So like we gave our all, every single person employed in the company when, when we had that shift in um, Oakland Ballet, they were like, yeah, we got this diversity. You get, mm -hmm. different, you get different flavors and you get different this, different that, and people are connecting. Um, and the audience is supposed to reflect that and then on stage reflects it back and forth. So as far as leadership is concerned, I've seen some really beautiful things happen that people are screaming and fighting and knocking themselves out about. That's the part that drives me so crazy. It makes my heart ache a lot of the times because I'm seeing and hearing the same questions. And what I've experienced was like, it may have been this, this big, but it happened. And I'm wondering why that big from this little thing didn't go like this. I'm sitting here looking like that. Mm -hmm. like, I'm still going and I'm very aware there's a blockage that happened. It's a span of about 10 to 20 years. Wow. Wow. Which I, that some of us were on the ride for, so we saw it. Wow. So, I think that's mm -hmm. so significant because um, so when I think about leadership, I think people always think about leading, right? Which is the act that comes with it. Um, and it's very important, but it's also leadership is an opportunity for tremendous learning and growth. So if only if only a few people are ever allowed to lead, then that limits. That means only a few people ever get to learn and grow. So I always it I always take it back almost like the leading is great, but I think about the experience and the chance at leadership um, and whether or not that's being afforded to enough people equitably. So building on that, a question that I have is, do you feel there are, do you feel there are adequate opportunities for young Black women in the arts industry? Um, at this point now, presently, as far as March 2021, I believe that there are more opportunities. Mm. There will be and there must be more. It's not enough. Mm. Got it. There are some, so I'm not going to, you know, say no, there isn't. And when those of us that are still going, we may not be a part of these organizations or permanently, but we live the life and we keep going. Those branches and they know that you have the root, the tree and everything in the branches and leaves. We're all still a part of that, even if we are individual, but we come from somewhere. Yeah. So um, freelance, 
in comparison to being locked in on total staff, the, the modern thing that is happening right now is that we have a very unique, uh, unique category of, of Black artists in particular that are seen as freelance, but they have a history, they have a root. Mm -hmm. And they have beliefs and they know what they're they know what they stand for and they know what they're about and they know what they've done and they know what they want to do and they're still trying to figure it out along the way too. So I guess I'm mentioning that yes, there has to be much more work done, but there has been work done. And some of it has been visible. And some of it, no, it has not. You just feel the change. You just feel mm -hmm. the change. You don't everything is not going to be in your face. And some people are still, still having a hard time with this change. It's not over. Yeah. They see the change and they're, I, I noticed that when we go like this, they're thinking, some people are thinking, um, I'm losing my place. No, yeah. That's like, right. no one's trying to take anything from you. Right. We, that's another discussion. We can talk about what <laughs> someone has attempted to take from you. We can discuss that. But us wanting equality as women in particular, Black women, is not us taking your power away. Mm. I have to apologize. Say that again. <laughs> us wanting like this is not us taking your power away. Right. Right. That's right. That's so right. So make room for more than one. You're not gonna just take it all, like. I love that. You can, we can. It's a whole. It's a loaded discussion. Yeah. Yes. No, it we don't is. have to ask. I'm like, should we not? If we die, I mean, we have to keep growing. We have yes. to keep learning fresh new ideas that's going to ignite a, a lot of different things that will keep. I'm speaking about concert dance. You know, going. I mean, because the world is changing. We have to, and that doesn't mean we go crazy, okay? There's balance to everything, but I, I absolutely. So no. we can't lose sight of that and get stuck in that box. Absolutely, yeah. because people are some are very scared. Change is is very nerve wracking for many of us. Yeah. It's not always so easy. It may appear to be, but sometimes change it requires a lot. It requires a lot on everyone's part. Yeah. And yeah. I, think, I do think that, I think, wow, you, you touched on something so deep. And I was asking, I was reacting. I'm like, should we go there? Should we go there? But I think we should. I think you're, you are touching on um, something that is really hush, you know, every, it's like hush, hush, right? But, but it's, but no, but it's really real. And I, I see that this is a perfect segue into the equity conversation because that's where I see this playing out tenfold this idea that we're going to do safe equity right we're gonna we're gonna give positions that really don't enact decisions or affect the bottom line that's that's how we're gonna check our equity box we're gonna have our you know our this number of students and our this number of faculty and you know i'm speaking i'm speaking informally um, but I don't mean to mock this trend at all. It's something that I re that really, really concerns me because it's worse, right? It's a it's a it's it's a flawed and ineffective means for advancing something that's really serious, that is people's lives and is informing their lived experience and opportunities to advance in this field. It's not a game for me, right? That's this is real life. And and so to your point of no, empowering a black woman in an artistic organization should not be seen as a threat. It should be welcome. Absolutely, absolutely. I had some very recent events wow. that, have, that have happened. We're talking less than a week ago. Wow. I'm not here to drop names. Yeah. I'm not here to expose anything that we don't know. Sure. As far as the nature of our well-being and having a right to work under circumstances that we are comfortable with or not, we have a right. And it's not, it's not right for specific people and organizations that um, don't have as much of this melanin in here mm -hmm. to feel a certain way and it's okay for them. But one black woman, maybe four are like, I'm uncomfortable. 
now it's a whole thing. So now we have to kick into drive. And now since me, I'm at the age and the place that I am, which is dancing and also like, okay, everybody, okay. Mm -hmm. They're rallying, rally. That's a rally. You can't come go, don't go run shooting in the door because we need to figure out, wait a minute. Okay, wait, just before you do that, just fall back a little bit. All right, and what's going on? So these circumstances, required that and it just happened so naturally and some things didn't so when you're in it together I, I could say for example I'm taking a dance job somewhere and I'm on my own I show up mm -hmm. there might be three other three or four other black dancers there might not be you might know them black dance community we usually know each other Someone knows someone. Oh, did you know that? <laughs> sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I said, and no one else does that kind of thing. Then there's that your teacher? Yes. I didn't know. <laughs> when the way you hold your arm, the way you hit around that corner, is so and so your teacher? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I have my eyes like that sometimes. So, anyway, there might be things that are jumping off in an organization dealing with this leadership thing, it's concert dance, and some things over a period of time are brought to your attention about who's who's in what position of that organization right and sometimes those middle people you need to check because they ruined things and they were in your vision really curious like yeah it was about life life and and well-being and safety we're in the middle of a pandemic right it's not 2020 12 so the way that these places mm. are run their their places no, it's different now. We yeah. are right in here. So something else jumps off and then the black folks happen to be black, speak up and say, mm -mm. then that almost cost someone their job, but that person has no position to make the call. So mm -hmm. I got into affirmative action. Yep, there you go. All right, now we're gonna go like this, calm. Zoom, we've been all Zooming all this time. Mm -hmm. Emergency, emergency rally right now. Yeah, we're over here. We're over there. Look like y'all not gonna have a show. This mm -hmm. isn't right. That's right. I have to get to a point. You don't have to do that, but sometimes it takes that. We know this through listening to your heart and what's right. You don't have to run through, kick the door in, and be all. Yeah. You have a certain way of strategy, and these are we are black women in particular. But it wasn't just us there what was going on started like that. Yes. And I'm dealing with things physically this day. So by the time I come from acupuncture, I jump out the Uber and I see, I see a couple of, couple of my people sitting in the corner and looking like the rally thing. I was like, what has happened in the last two hours that I did not know about what's happening? So I get a quick rundown, affirmative, act, affirmative action. Long story short, we all performed. You, you know, you take care of things. Thank you so much. It's only a span of two weeks. It sounds like six months, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't need to be all that. So back into make, having the having the opportunity or the the setup as far as or, organizations that say they welcome us. <laughs> you say you welcome us. I read my contract. I know what you're about. I know what your organization is about and I, I have worked for you before mm. didn't have any problems if there were it's really water under the bridge to me mm. I'm not here for you I'm here for so I have a way of dealing with certain things but then there's a certain level of certain things where you're like nope I'm not talking with you I'm going to the head of the source to read of the of who sign who signs the checks and whose organization is this you're in the middle and you're messing things up yeah uh -oh. there's evidence there's evidence of you messing things up. And I don't know why. It could be anything that has nothing to do with any of us and how people handle stuff. So yes, I agree with the way organizations are being run. We have huge progress and wonderful, wonderful people presently who I know close to my heart that are the right people for the right positions in the right time. And I believe that what I'm about and where I'm going and where that's going to, where I'm going to sit with certain things and where I sit now, I believe that's the same thing too. It's time for certain of so those of us who have come from that, come from places, some of them really hard and rough, 
And some of them, you know, we, it, we thrived as artists and as women. Yes. And sometimes they tried to shoot us down. Mm. So now here we are. What are we going to do? We're going to take care of ourselves. If you need some counseling, you need to do some, some type of something that helps you heal your heart because you take on a lot of blows. Yes. And how, what are we going to do with, do with that while we maintain ourselves? So I do see a lot of us falling into these positions that we're going to do what we're going to do about it. I love so that. The, the constant cycle of these organizations and the people running them and the people underneath those people and then the dancers that come into them, mm. it's all like crazy. Yeah. Like it can be really crazy or it's going to look like, I don't know, I don't know. And you want diversity, so that means... You're going to have to restructure your entire system. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thank you. If you don't want to do that, if you don't want to do that, don't do it. I want diversity. If you don't want to do that, you don't really want this. I know Ashanti has some burning questions, but I just have to, I want to respond <laughs> to this because I just want to say one last thing on this note. Yes. Yes, Panika. Yes, yes. It, I'm confused as to why, how organizations will say, we want to see a difference but not recognize that to yield change, you have to change the way your organization is run. I, I mean, it blows my mind. Let's keep the entire leadership and board the exact same, but let's hope for different outcomes, right? How? It's not gonna happen. How? You're jumping from, yeah, Z, it's, it's, E, C, how? E, E, jumping. How? You wanna keep the exact same people. And let's be real, art is subjective. Yes. It is beautifully subjective. I like that. I'm not here to make everyone see the same thing and want the same thing. I'm not here for that. I am a protector of the subjectivity of creative creativity and innovation. I'm protecting that. All that means, though, is if you want to see those subjective and, and even subconscious biases look different and be more representative, the people behind those lived experiences yeah must be different they must come in all shades and from all backgrounds to. right they have, to. they have to um i can speak on that subject on various levels now um and i can keep going you know i speak very deeply about um being a hearing dancer mm. and an able dancer and then you have the disabilities the, the disabled dancers you have the, the deaf community, the black deaf community, the black dance, the black dancers, black deaf dancers, and how that feels to work in these environments and they're running their things too. You know, so there's all these uh, areas that tie into what exactly is, is diversity and accepting someone and how they are. What exactly is this? Because mm -hmm. um, I'm learning, you know, I'm expanding and I'm learning. And it would be really great to continuously be involved in that. And if not, it is no hard thing for me anymore to not be involved in that. I know what I can be involved in. You can have me and then we can learn, you know? Like, I speak highly of a of many number of opportunities I've had to be um, half, be on, on a cast of half hearing dancers and half deaf dancers. So I had to learn sign language. I wanted, I've always loved sign language, I wanna learn. So learning that and then knowing that you will have to work together. And if you are working in an organization that this director is this and he is this and that, yeah. So that means you find out he or she is going to accept you the way you are and you accept the organization the way it is too. So in that beautiful sense, there's a really beautiful mixture that goes like this. Mm -hmm. and that is what you want that is what I want that's what I deserve and I've known that for a long time so everywhere every now and then along the, time, along the way I get these very bizarre circumstances <laughs> and I'll just do it just do yeah that's nice mm -hmm. and go so then that affects when you bring in a few people that aren't about all that chit chat and all this other craziness that <laughs> waste rehearsal times and we know what that feels like you look in the dance and be in a bat like just want to dance. <laughs> you hear somebody like, 
And if you feel that, you don't want to feel that as a dancer. You don't want to feel that as an artistic director either. Yeah. Sure. So you have to, I, in my opinion, and out of my observation and experience, you have to change the structures. It has to change. It won't change if that doesn't happen. So I speak very highly about that. And I know it's possible because it's happened. It just needs to continuously happen. Right. We're not saying you can't have white dancers. <laughs> it's not even right. Right. Yeah. Correct. Right. Wow. You can't, I'm not hearing people can't dance with deaf dancers. What? Right. Right. Hearing people don't want to learn sign language. You can hear. You don't need to learn. I've heard that. I was like, do you know how offensive you are right now? I'm offended and I'm not deaf, but I'm offended because I can hear and I care very deeply for my friends that happen to be deaf. They're about what I'm about too. So I'm offended when I hear people say things like that. Mm. Well, how do you do that? She just has one leg. I've heard that. And I'm like, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So... I'm just broadening, uh, I'm, I'm highlighting yeah. uh, things that I'm connected to as this Black woman. And everything is looking at us like you don't belong. But I can't say, I can't keep that up in my life because if I, if I believed that, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. So when people get frustrated and they vent, and then what are you going to do? And I'm like, well, what are you doing right now? Like, what are you doing? And we are still in the pandemic. This is not, like I said, it's not 2012. What does that mean? I can let you know what that means. Just give me like a couple of minutes and I'll have something for you. And I'll let you know what I mean. It's not 2012. Because things were much different. Absolutely. Yes. Speaking of that things being much different. And you said something about belonging, feeling like you belong. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shift and talk about hair. Yes. Let's talk about hair. I know I personally had uh, my challenges <laughs> while growing up as a dancer and figuring that out and trying not to change who, you know, who I am just to, to meet the standard, the status quo of hair, what looks right and appropriate for stage and performance. Um, if you don't mind just sharing about your experience and, and how you feel and where we are now with hair. You know, let's talk about yeah. it. <laughs> well, let's see. Where are we with hair? Well, from, um, from our observation, we have much more options and products and, and knowing as far as bypassing the products and going into the, the source. You know, like using your 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 plants, the plant blade, plant based, and apple cider vinegar, and this and that, and the components of things that your hair and your skin like. Uh, that journey has been a big one because a lot of us have had um, the chemically treated things. We've had a lot of damage. We've had a lot of misunderstanding on our own part. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's been a journey. I've been needing to talk more about this um, from here to Africa. Mm. Um, I think I should just prepare myself again for that because it is a huge subject and it's a, it's a journey. So like many people know that your roots are going to win. Okay, let's just start there. <laughs> The roots. <laughs> yes, I like it. So you have to understand the root. So if you're in transition, like I can, I can speak on many are many of us. There was a point where I decided, okay, I'm ready to 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 let this let this processing go. All right, I think I have an idea. If I remember, looking back into childhood now. Some people do the big chop. Some people have other options. I took other options and, and saw that process happen. So mm -hmm. I manually did the transition for myself, but there are lots of options to take as far as if you're in your transition while you can 
stay out of the hot water with the hair changes where people are needing you as a professional to pull up for. Mm. Now that's one, that's one category of it. The other, ca other category is the fact that your texture is the texture that it is. Now that's, that's this subject. This is where the trauma comes in. Mm. Okay, that's this it. Trauma. This is the trauma part that has nothing to do with you because they don't know what to do either. So mm. you have to sometimes we see each other. You have the internet now. This is, you know, this is dream. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've just gone to the library and just been like, hey. Right. <laughs> Help. <laughs> right. I think that that bit of the journey would have been much different for me. I have no regrets, but the options are so out here now. And we, uh, the best way is interaction with each other. So figuring out what to do. So some people, they have given a lot of trauma to us involving our hair texture for our jobs. Yes. It's very un- unnecessary and they know it and it's painful and a lot of people do it on purpose mm. and if people don't do it on purpose they really don't know yeah yeah so we have to interact with each other i will do as many talks and i'm shocked that i haven't done as many as i would like to mm. um this goes in in the same category hair and goes in the same category as tying your shoe your ribbons yes Oh, wow. And yeah. How to walk. Yes. Like how to walk in a point shoe. Yeah. That's another level. How to walk is your posture is one thing, but a point shoe walking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like once you get the hang of the, of the basics, I feel like that of the hair, how, what does your hair need? Mm. Is it, do you need to, is it dry? Is it oversaturated? Are you drinking enough water? That affects all of this. Yes. So when people say, come on, ladies, we need a French twist for this one. And then for the other ballet, we want it, we want it down. And I remember having a, <laughs> my hair was a little shorter at the time. Um, so I had a whole situation. It was almost panic, really, dealing with this. I was like, my best friend, her, she's all over her place. So she was like, what's the matter? Said, yeah what's happening you okay I said yeah they said they want our hair down I mean it kind of like more like out mm. oh. my hair doesn't go down it goes out exactly <sighs> all right so what are we gonna do this, uh, this, I have to figure something okay. out <laughs> yes mm. I, I mean lots of oh, there are lots of different options now like there, if I'm run, if I'm wanting this feeling, like it's a feeling. A lot of work has a feeling, so you yes. have, yeah. have to have a feeling. Mm. So there are lots of different things you can add. Like there's like these awesome clip-ins. I found an exact match to yeah. my hair that did not exist. So if I felt like I want to half up, half down, but I want more length, I can do that. Even if I didn't, this is my hairstyle for this. It's that doorway has got to be left open. So involving hair, like a uh, updo. Like, we want to have a cute, pretty hairstyle for that too. I want it to be cute too. I want a like, nice hairstyle for this costume or what the mood is. Right. So yeah, it's been a journey with that. And I would be more than happy to give more information about that because you have to, we have to know how to take care of our hair so, so they can do, so the hair does what you want when you want. Like this is just a twist out today because I didn't know what I wanted. <laughs> so then when it's time, I have options. I can put, tie her up or I can let her down, right. push her side, maybe a little, yep. little bun twist around, French twist half in the back. Yes. You know, so Beautiful. have options. options. Yes. But the, a lot of organizations don't see it as options. They see it as limitations. That's so, how oh, that's what you're going to say. That's that. literally what I was going to ask you about. Yeah, I was, this is so, I mean, we're just, we're just vibing right now. Like it's so connected. Yes. That's what I feel about our hair 
in this business. It's not limited. It is unlimited. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but we have to know what to do. I don't wait for people to know what to do with my hair. I love it when I run across a, a stylist that knows and they, I, they, they love it. I show up ready to go. They're like, oh no, you didn't have to do that. I was going to do it. I was looking forward to doing that part. I was like, I'm sorry. I just, I just detangle it myself and I just show up. I've gotten used to that. They're like, I was looking forward to it. I met one, one, one uh, makeup artist and hairstylist. She was very upset. No, she was disappointed that I showed up and I had washed my hair, detangled <laughs> it, a little blowout and just got it ready to go pull the scarf off. And she was like, I was like, what? what? What happened? She said, well, I saw your picture and I was really looking forward to it. I thought I was going to do all that. And I was like, well, if I knew that you were going to do that, I would have saved it for you. <laughs> so we had a little moment right there. I only had one moment like that. I was like, oh, she was ready. And she did such a beautiful job with the hairstyle. It was beautiful. Wow. Yeah, so it's been a journey with that. And I would like as many people um, to to embrace that part of themselves versus it being a limit. So, you know, it's not. Mm -hmm. One of the things, um, this is making me think about our work at Dance Institute. And I know some org other organizations across the country um, that there's sometimes this inner, this conflict between trying to make sure your students are prepared to compete in an industry that really wasn't, wasn't, did not envision them in its inception. Right, I'm gonna use quotes around that. Um, and I'm speaking about ballet. Yeah. Um, and so preparing them and making sure they have the experience to like adjust or change as needed, right? That chameleon sort of attribute, but at the same time, not like also empower and celebrate who they are and their identity, right? There's this, there's this conflict. I had a student say one time, um, in my early time at DIW, we were doing a original production um, and it called for, you know, an aesthetic, I'll call it that, an old timey aesthetic. And the, the, I had an older student say to me, but but Miss Gaina, you're always saying as we are, show up as we are and be proud. But in but in this production, you're telling me, you know, she got in trouble. We had a rehearsal and she got in trouble because her hair was not, um, it was not in the style that we had set, which was like a half a half down. Right. And it was a very honest moment for me and myself because I said, oh my, I'm, I'm subconsciously reinforcing, right? As part of this, because it's a way of life, right? You've been ballet since... You yeah. can walk. You don't even realize how ingrained yes. sort of the the self change and hate is. So at DIW, like after that, I was like, oh, we're doing other kinds of productions because I need the kids to have performance opportunities where as they are is not only enough, but it's celebrated. celebrated. You, you're yeah. wearing hair candy and your yeah. rose, and you're going to look, you're going to be queens in this production, yeah. right? So I was curious because you're, you're an instructor as well. You've taught all over a wide range of students. How have you, how, what has your experience been like with that sort of like, okay, I am trying to prepare you guys for ballet, for whatever that may be. But I also want you to understand like your, your hair as it is, is beautiful. Like it's not, you know, how do you navigate that? It's one of my favorite subjects. I get very emotional because I'm just so excited about it. <laughs> like it's not sad to me. Mm. It's like excited. So um, I show. I have to show them. I'm not going to sit down and and talk with you about. To, they already know about the trauma of it. I need to tell them what happened, or what I've been through. We can. That's for a later date. It's easier and more effective for me to show up. Mm. I will show you. Okay. As you notice, I like it when the neck and the back of the ears are clear. I like it when it's clear. It's like, I just, um, but if you're going to be half up, half down, whatever the case is, you don't ever want to get lost. You want them to see you. Simple yeah. as that. That sounds like Arthur Mitchell in my head. He comes all the time. Mm -hmm. He comes to me all the time. They have to see your face. Yes. If you're going to do extra things like that, is this film or is this concert? What is this? Because right. 
it mm. depends on what you want to display right here what you want to display so I love it when I get a group of students in particular um, where I have them like twice a week, maybe more. That way I can, on Monday you're gonna get this, maybe on Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm going to do something else because I wanna do something else anyway. So I would just show up and have different thing, maybe a side, you know, whatever. I <laughs> need my example. Yes, <laughs> do it. They're sitting looking like, I don't know. Yes. A head wrap, my head wrap is not what you think. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think it is. I don't know what you think it is. Because you have the bonnet look. <laughs> I just love us so much. Oh my gosh, I, right? I have a <laughs> nightcap bonnet. <laughs> bonnet, like. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnet. Seven, eight. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you have silk satin wrap for your fierce updo that you made sure is together. Wrap satin ready. Right. Warm up, warm up. I needed this. I need mm -hmm. this. To stay. Okay. this part is going to stay. Right, right. No, no stay. Bobby pin, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a technique we could talk could talk about the my my spray bottle yes. pomade yes it is you, know, you just gotta have your stuff so yeah. there's that kind of wrap and then also there is no wrap we don't have no wrap no wrap just something nice up and neat I I'm all right with the puff I love a little puff mm -hmm. but it has to be clean and neat around the sides don't right. pull don't pull don't do anything extra because that very delicate. Don't do that. The type of hair is delicate. So it's the more you brush, it's not going to make, it's your hair is not straight. Okay. Period. That, this is, that's the thing we have to speak about. It's not straight. You have to get to know your texture. Yeah. You want it neat. Neat. Just held and neat. So when your texture is a little on the thinner side, it seems like that's going to be better. But that's their brand. That's their 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 kind of hair. Your hair is your hair. Mm -hmm. So I'm always going to be a huge ambassador of that. And we do have to re de de reprogram ourselves because we do catch ourselves watching. I love documentaries. I've been going back into the 19, 1900s. I've been going into the 1800s. Last night I was on 1945. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about... Um, the systematic thing that happens and you catch ourselves mm. like when you see this and you see that and it gets programmed inside you see how far it goes it goes as far as our texture so trying to like over th overthrow that the clearest way is to show you there have been a couple of a couple of women i know in particular men too and they're grown and they're looking at your hair like wow um i like it <laughs> You're like, thank, thank you. <laughs> it's awkward, right? Hair is art. <laughs> like, right. it's, 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 art like it's kind of like, and I'll yeah. go, yeah, this is what she's doing today. She, yes, this is what she's doing today. I love that. I just, I, that's how I approach it, you know? So some people are still learning to accept visually. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. But it has to start with us first. You have to get to know your texture and be around people that can help you. Someone helped me with my first French twist when I got a little more length. I was getting to know the bun, okay? I was get, I was on my way. I was getting to know how and what how much time I need, what products I need, how do I need to do this thing on my own. Traveling, I can't have someone doing my hair all the time. I need to know how to do this too. So... One of my friends, I consider her as a dance mom. I confide in her deeply every single day. Um, she says, what's going on over here, mama? I said, oh, I can't think of the fresh twist in a year. Just losing it. I'm losing it. I'm not a panic attack. <laughs> in London, I think. She says, all right. Now, what do you have? Okay, we're going to need some more bobby pins. This is not going to work. I'll hear. I'll go. So she went to her little dressing room, her dressing area and sat down. She has thick, longer hair than me. They're way down here, thick, thick Latin hair. She says, do you know how long it took me to do this? 
this amount of minutes. And I was like, wow. And she's like, yeah, but the journey has been, you know, it's all right. So I'm going to do it this time and I'm going to walk you through it. Listen to what I'm saying. You see how I did this? Are you left-handed or right-handed? I was like, left-handed. Naturally, if you want to twist, which way do you want to go? Left-handed, right? I said, yeah. She said, but you just did it with your right. So you are ambidextrous. So that means you twist to the right. You go this way for you. Wow. Try it this way. But if you feel comp, just to get it up there. So she just walks me through it. So working together manually is the best way. You have to, hey, you have to get get together. You have to hold hands. You have to like do that together. Because some of us, we need that. Though the internet makes it a little bit more accessible. But it's still hands. Thanks, Paulnika. So just to close out, do you have any valuable insights you would like to share with our viewers? Um, let's see. I suggest to keep going, simply, simply put, keep going. Um, mind your heart. Mind your heart mm. and if you need to know if you don't know what that means, start there. What does that mean? How do you, how are you feeling about what you're doing? How you feel about what you're witnessing and what you want? What do you want? And what do you deserve? Mm. And if you don't know, then first start with how you feel. Do you love to dance? No. Okay. So if you don't love to dance, then what do you, what do, I'm going to ask again, what do you love to do? I didn't say what you don't want, what you don't love. Right. So that already starts with some other stuff. There's already some layers to go through. Um, so I just feel to keep going. I just say, look to your past. And if you don't know your past, get to know your past. Mm -hmm. So you know where you are. And where you're going, you have to look to your past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm here right now. A lot of people are saying they're very present. I'm very present too. We have to stay <laughs> present. It's good. Present is good. You're here now. But you come from something. You come from somewhere that brought you here. So you're here and where are you going? So look to your past. That's all. Yes. Maintain. Thank your you. Wow. Thank you so much, Panika. Um, this has just been incredible. If any of our viewers would like to hear more from you, catch up with you, what is the best way? Where would you direct them um, to, to follow all that you're involved in? Um, I think the best way you can follow me for now is on Instagram uh, at P-A-U-N-I-K-A-J. Um, I'm working on a website, so be on the lookout for that. I will put that up on Instagram as soon as I'm ready for that, but I'm working on it. Perfect. We definitely want to say a special thank you to our audience and viewers. Um, we hope that you enjoyed today's conversation as we celebrate Women's History Month, and we're excited for future DIW Town Halls and conversation with more incredible artists and leaders in the field. Thank you. And if you want to keep up with us, please check out our website at www.dancesintothewashington.org and follow us on social media, um, Facebook Dance Institute, Instagram Dance Institute of Wa, YouTube Dance Institute of Washington. Again, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye.